Hello, today I'm going to show you how to write an essay on any text. To do that, I'll be focusing on this poem, Mother Any Distance, but um, all the techniques I show you will work just as well with a novel or a play. Um, and I'm also going to show you where I got this essay from. So here it is as a PDF, and I have downloaded this from my exam board, OCR, but uh, it Similar essays will be available to you with your exam board. Just look for the support materials. And what you get is a candidate's answer, and then at the end, uh, examiner's commentary. And often this commentary is much more developed um, than it is in this particular example. Okay, let's look at the actual essay and work out why this candidate has got 100%. I've separated some parts of the answer so that you can see what these points refer to. So start with more than one point of view. Here there are two. The imagery of distance and the difficulty of letting go are used by Armitage to convey the strength of an attachment between a mother and son. So there are two things he's looking at here. Uh, the difficulty of letting go and the strength of an attachment. Um, both done really economically in one sentence, two ideas. Uh, this also does this job for us. Start with a statement of the poet's point of view. Yeah, this is what Armitage is trying to convey. Um, that is an A-star, A-grade um, technique. Then we get to the next paragraph. The poem depicts moving house, but symbolising the moving on of a young man and the independence he now has. Again, more than one idea in the sentence. The structure of the poem varies as there's no fixed rhyme scheme, but the lines of the stanzas vary in length. Well, so what? You don't get any marks for that, but now he does, or she does. This could perhaps be used to symbolise the relationships with mothers as the distance between a mother and a son constantly varies. So here the candidate is thinking that the poet, the author, Armitage, is trying to make a general point. Yeah, so it's not just this one relationship. He's using that relationship to talk about mother's relationships with sons generally. And that's another technique to get into the A star. Um, well, I've helpfully color coded things. I at least hope helpfully. So subject terminology I've highlighted in yellow. And you can see that this writer has put in as much as possible early on to let the examiner know that, look, I know the right vocabulary to use when I'm dealing with a poem. Uh, credit me as an expert. If I go further on down, you'll see such things as pathos, theme, imagery, metaphor, and so on. Uh, if you're not sure of a word when you go to these examiners' um, uh, support materials, then right-click. Uh, maybe you have to highlight it first. Let's just give that a go. Uh, right click on it and we'll take synonyms. So uh, pathos here is um, probably the closest match for you is pity, uh, but that's not the point. I'm demonstrating it to you so you can steal vocabulary uh, from the examiner's materials by right clicking and looking at what they mean. Okay, what did um, the grey denote? Well, have alternatives to the word shows. And it's interesting that this candidate has done so um, throughout the beginning of their essay. And then as they've exhausted their ideas, they're coming back to shows and show and show, uh, becoming less adventurous. And this is another top tip I give my students. If you show off with all your techniques at the beginning of your essay, the examiner will make up their mind there and then. Uh, and then they're just reading the rest of the essay to confirm that first gut instinct. Um, so if, you're, if the rest of your essay doesn't uh, look as good, you can still get the marks, provided that the conclusion is spot on. I'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, okay, the other technique that this writer has used, which is a really clever one, is that they're writing about structure early on. Um, it's really easy when you're quoting just to write about the language and all mark schemes have a mark for structure and form. And this candidate has said, right, I'm going to write about structure almost in my first paragraph um, because then I know I'm scoring marks for that stuff. Now, that's a really top tip. Uh, 
The other question that you might ask yourself is, how many quotations do you need? Uh, well, in purple, I've highlighted the number of question, uh, quotations. If we scroll down, uh, this candidate has used 14 uh, to get the A star. Um, so a high number, but not a massive one. Um, in the same booklet, they offer us uh, an answer that's called less than this with 24 quotations in it. Uh, so the next question is, what do you do with those quotations in order to score so highly? Well, here I've artificially broken up um, a paragraph into component parts so you can see the next skill, which is have more than one explanation or interpretation. And this candidate's got three for virtually every uh, quotation they're looking at. So the title is used by Armitage to stress the high regard he holds his mother in. So that he means or she means by that calling her mother rather than mum. The title is also the first line, any, uh, any distance greater than a single span shows that he had needed his mother and that she had been very dear and helpful to him. So that's still dealing with the same um, quotation, the same line. And then there's a further point about the same line. This is moving to the reader as the poet is saying that he would not get very far without his mother and her sacrifices. Um, now, I haven't separated into three points all the other um, paragraphs, but this writer does use that technique all the way through of, of writing several explanations uh, for each quotation. Right, well, the next vital skill is this ability to be able to embed your quotations. Uh, I've done a separate video on that, but you can easily see from the purples here that embedded quotations are very short, and that's a, an easy shorthand for how to embed them. Just quote the very words you need and put them in the middle of your sentences. Um, this one is the only one that begins a sentence, but you can see that leaving up the stairs reinforces this idea um, means that this quotation refers back to something that was said earlier and because it's not an entirely new point the writer gets away with starting a sentence with the quotation there uh, but otherwise avoid starting your sentence with a quotation because it's very difficult to embed if you put it at the beginning right and now we get to the end of the essay and this is what's really going to nail your A star or not. And it's how well you conclude. Um, the concluding paragraph is this final one. Although the writer has decided to start with the connective overall up here to link these two paragraphs together as a conclusion. And let's look at the skills of the conclusion. The first thing that I always tell my students to do is this show how the poet's point of view has changed by the end of the text. Here it's a poem. Um, you remember that you started with the poet's point of view. Well, down here, uh, there's a new point of view, the reluctance of both to accept they have reached a breaking point where something has to give contributes to making the poem so moving. Uh, so it's this lack of acceptance that is a changed point of view from the beginning. Uh, another skill you will see is that this writer has written 711 words, um, which is nearly 20 words per minute. And that is just an exam skill, and you've got to practice it. Um, put yourself under time pressure, keep writing till the time is up, and see how far you get. You know, if you only get to 500, fair enough, you've probably written enough for a B grade. If you get to 600, you're probably on an A. Um, you know, not literally, you might write rubbish, but hopefully you won't. Um, and those word counts do matter. Uh, in the conclusion, this writer has gone back to the main ideas they set out at the beginning. Uh, so there are the main ideas from the strength of the relationship between a mother and son, but they don't repeat the main ideas. They then look at them in more depth, here focusing on the difficulty that both the mother and son must go through to let each other go. Um, a final skill, and a really rare skill in writing, um, is to use a quotation in the last sentence of your conclusion. Uh, the reluctance of both to accept they have reached 
a breaking point where something has to give contributes to making the poem so moving. Again, they've gone back to the words of the question about the poem being moving, uh, but ingeniously use a quotation in that last sentence in order to round the conclusion off. Okay, well, what's so important about this video and what's so important about those support materials that the exam board give you is that all the things that I've shown you here, apart from embedding your quotations, are things that aren't in the mark scheme. So what I've shown you here are the kinds of hidden rules. And you only work out what those hidden rules are by reading through exam answers that have got 100%. So hopefully you will have found that really useful. The examiner's commentary should be really useful. Let's have a look at it here. This is a response showing critical perception. Well, how did the examiner know? Well, because there were so many explanations offered for each quotation uh, and the interpretation of the poem, cogently and precisely evaluating its language. Well, that's just examiner speak for saying, you looked at lots of different interpretations. The paragraph on spacewalking develops ideas on language particularly well and quotations are embedded and well used. That's really useful to you because obviously you go back, here's the spacewalking paragraph, you reread it and think, well, I wonder if I could write something as good as that. Oh, I know, I'll put the essay aside and just write it from memory, get the essay out again and check, how did I do? And that's a perfect way to revise. Uh, the final thing I'm going to show you is a lower band one answer. So this is an answer that the examiner thought was not quite as good. Um, if I show it to you, the purples are the quotations. There's 25 of them here, uh, 714 words, just as long. And why didn't this get the top mark? Well, let's have a look. Uh, this is a sophisticated critical response to the poem underpinned by a quantity of research. So our previous writer hadn't done any research. This one has. Um, it's actually, I think, a much, much better essay. But I want to explore why the examiner hasn't given it as good mark. It's perceptive in its interpretation of the poem, though the interpretation might be challenged. So even though the examiners have to credit any idea that you come up with and back up, um, that's the rules of the exam, uh, it's still counted against this, this candidate, but it's still an A star, okay? So I want to reassure you that even if you get an examiner who's prejudiced against you, like this one, uh, you can still get the A star by having original interpretations. And obviously it's more fun to do English where you can have original interpretations. So keep doing it. Um, understanding is clearly displayed and supported, though language might be more fully explored. Well, there you could argue that this candidate hasn't um, broken down those three different interpretations of quotations, like our previous one. As you can see, there are so many quotations in there. Um, I would urge you actually to go and download um, the OCR material because this candidate here is much better prepared for A-level than the person who's got 100%. Um, but uh, for now, you just want to get 100%. So I hope this video has done the job for you. Um, don't leave your revision to luck. Actually try writing this essay now and then um, compare it to, um, to, to the original. Uh, if you like more videos, uh, please subscribe and good luck with your revision.